Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chinese Moms in Business Club's Queen's Bee series. My name is Sally Mayer Yip. I'm the founder and MD of 11K Consulting, which is a China PR agency in London. And today I'm very excited to have two amazing ladies with me. One is my co-host, Xiao Feng. I will let Xiao Feng to introduce yourself later. And also our very, very special guest, uh, Xin from Paris today. Um, so may I just briefly introduce our club and our mission uh, before we kick off the interview. So um, Chinese Mom in Business Club is all about inspiring and empowering Chinese moms in business to fulfill their full potential at work and in life and therefore the birth of Queen's Bee series to get to know more about different inspiring moms who manage to strive in terms of their business or their job as well as their family life. So in the past, we had interviewed different uh, moms in business around the world. And today we have someone uh, from Paris. Without further ado, may I ask Xiao Feng to introduce Xin, uh, to the audience today? Thank you. Thank you, Sally. It definitely is my honor. So, um, um, hello, old and, and new friends. Um, my name is Xiaofang Satan. I am the co-founder of the club. Uh, I'm also the CEO of Alice in Legal, uh, global experts in um, legal structures for multinational groups. And so um, today our guest Xin was actually introduced by our previous guest uh, Xu Yang and in fact is actually our guest in January. So thanks to her we, we, we got to talk to Xin today and she is currently the uh, Vice President and CFO for Escort Europe. And uh, as Sally mentioned, she is actually based in Paris. And she, and she is truly a very authentic Chinese mom, was born and raised in um, Hefei, Anhui province, China. And she's mom of two uh, young boys. And so with very much excitement and curiosity, Xin, and welcome to the Kunbi interview for the Chinese Mom in Business Club. Oh, thank you. A great honor to meet you, ladies. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, so, Sin, I would like to know more about your work. Uh, I noticed that you currently uh, uh, work for the Escort uh, last June. What is the biggest challenge you are facing at work at the moment? Mm. Yeah, indeed, I didn't change work for the past 15 years, and I just suddenly decided to change right in, before COVID. <laughs> I didn't choose at all this moment. Uh, so previously, I was working for a large French group. So I've been working uh, in different locations. In, uh, I started in Paris, actually. And then mm. I worked in China and also in Singapore for the past 13 years. Mm. Uh, then uh, I, I was uh, in finance. So I was head of finance for the South uh, East Asia for quite long. And then I got to know uh, Ascot because Capland is a very big uh, real estate group in Singapore. Mm. They're sitting in Singapore. So I get to know them. Uh, then uh, I was saying that, wow, uh, it's really a rare opportunity for me to change sector, to completely discover a new industry um, that I haven't had any chance to, to work on that. So it was very exciting opportunity. And also I would say uh, when I met some of the bottom in my career with my previous company. So I decided to make this move. Unfortunately, with COVID, it was quite complicated when I started to travel and had to uh, rush back home to see my kids right mm. the mm. day where Paris decided to lock down in, in mm. March. Uh, but the, the new job went uh, pretty well. Uh, the body was smooth. The colleagues uh, really welcomed me. And uh, it's we're, we're in the middle of the hospitality industry, so definitely it's one of the industry uh, the, mm. the most impacted. But at the same time, it's a very dynamic market that we see a lot of opportunities uh, for, for management and the investment to, to be started. So for finance, actually, we've got much more uh, work to do during this period. At the same time, to safeguard the company on the liquidity mm. and also looking for uh, investment opportunities to so take the opportunity to uh, um, accelerate actually on the digital transformation and also look for long-term value creation. So there's a lot of challenge keeping busy and uh, wake up very early in the morning every day. 
Oh, wow. Well, well, I have to say you are a very brave mom indeed. <laughs> basic change job and then into a totally different industry and then I think very much uh, I went to the international tax review women in tax forum I don't know whether you joined and and actually really reflect what you're saying and from all the speakers particularly female uh, professionals in tax and then finance indeed play a very very important role in the pandemic with everybody have to more more working from home how the mobility mobility works but fantastic um so really really good answer so so the next question for us is obviously you moved to paris last summer and as normal days paris is a fantastic dreamy place to live so um how is life in paris and obviously in the pandemic Hi. well paris is beautiful i mean the the weather is so good i think what we missed much in singapore is the four seasons so definitely the my kids who are born and raised in singapore they they never lived in paris really and uh, myself, I started and uh, I, I started to work in Paris. So I lived seven years before moving to, to Singapore. And so I met my French husband in, in Paris who followed me to Singapore. Yeah, so uh, indeed Paris is not new for me, but it's quite new uh, to raise kids here. And mm. especially my husband actually is, uh, is working in uh, Tokyo at the moment. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, since uh, one and a half years. Uh, so it, we initially thought that we could see each other quite uh, frequently with him traveling here and we uh, visit him in Japan. We love Japan a lot. Uh, but COVID really created a lot of difficulties for us to travel. Uh, but well, the, at the same time, Paris, it's, uh, it's much, uh, I would say, uh, less busier and much more peaceful with much less cars and people on the street. Mm. And we live nearby a very big park. Uh, so that the kids can enjoy after school. Uh, life is not not bad here. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Excellent. Um, I would also love to know more about your children. <laughs> How is bringing up children in Paris different from wow. in Singapore? I, I also used to live in Singapore before moving to London. Uh, so yeah, so I'm very curious how you manage. Yeah, we might have crossed each other in Singapore I think, yeah. before you moved out, right? <laughs> That's possible. Yeah. So, so what's your boy's name? Uh, it's a very French name, uh, Maxence and the Leon. Oh, wow, yeah. They also have oh. Chinese name, yes. They're perfectly uh, uh, fluent in the three languages. Oh, wow. Think, yeah, Singapore is really good to raise uh, multi-language kids. So they have always been in uh, French and English schools. Oh, and wow. I think uh, what is lucky in Paris that we also found uh, schools with uh, English and French so that mm. they, keep, they keep their language skills. Uh, I think that the, the, really the difficulty I'm facing is without the husband and the, the father of my kids every day at home. Mm. But at the same time, I'm not sure that if we have to really uh, stay in a small Paris apartment and work from home, both of us, it would also be quite tense. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, in, uh, the kids actually, they really adapt to new environment very fast. And uh, since Singapore was small and we used to travel a lot uh, since they were, they were babies, we travel almost uh, every month to bring them to different places. Mm. And both myself and my husband traveled a lot. So indeed, when they were babies, I, I tried to, uh, not to travel at the same time, uh, same time with my husband. But then we tried to figure out how to uh, travel actually as a family during the weekends and also discover different places uh, with kids. So uh, now with COVID, it's indeed uh, less easy. And also my husband is not here, but the boys are, they are not baby and babies anymore. They, they do uh, manage their, their, their schooling and they help on the housekeeping and uh, they continue to, to play uh, rugby. Uh, they, they, we've really found a fantastic uh, rugby club just nearby the house. So they, they get to play uh, twice per week and make new friends. So, mm. so we're quite lucky. Yeah, well, I have to say she's very, very inspiring. I hopefully all the moms are hearing and they're not complaining. Life is hard because, you know, bring up two, two boys in Paris without husbands. And, and that's, you know, fantastic. Still with beautiful smiles on the face. I mean, what can you say about it? So 
So Xin, I you know you look very gentle, calm, um, lady. And so, what's what's your leadership style at work? <laughs> That's a killing question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a natural uh, leader at all. Right? Uh, I'm not that good at public speaking, and I don't actually uh, proactively co communicate as much as possible. That I I really want to improve this uh, this aspect. Uh, mm. uh, every year, I'm fixing some target for myself to achieve. I would say it's really experience uh, built up and shape up the way that I am today. Mm. Uh, and since we work really in a very international and diversified environment with uh, teams and uh, peers from all different backgrounds, uh, there, there is not, I would say, one way to be a leader uh, so that we try to adopt ourselves, adapt ourselves to different circumstances. Mm. So we appear to be more, I would say, um, having strong opinions and uh, be assertive in an Asian environment to give instructions and hope that the team would follow. And it doesn't, it doesn't work. You work less and less with even young people and also with uh, with, far, with Europeans and with uh, different uh, mm. uh, background people from different backgrounds. It, it doesn't work. So we, we I, I try really to uh, encourage creativity and uh, have more and more sessions of uh, open discussion that I didn't use to, uh, I would say, in a Chinese culture. Yeah. Uh, then this really greatly helped to engage people, especially in a COVID situation where everybody is working from distance and people really need a bonding and connection uh, so that topics have to be shared and the common objectives that have to be uh, really well communicated in advance, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, uh, in finance functions, we also have quite rigid rules and compliance. And when it uh, uh, comes to to share decision uh, or I would say um, share not a vision or maybe a, a ambition that mm -hmm. we want to uh, achieve, mm -hmm. uh, then we need more uh, assertive attitude and also um, I would say still well uh, communicate. In advance, it's very, very important to get the, every level of the team understanding exactly why they're doing uh, in this direction. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, so I think I'm still working on myself. Oh. Fantastic. I mean, definitely, definitely we can see Xin's definitely earned earned the role. I mean, I can feel like there must be a lot of kind of experience and lessons and mistakes and then you will actually learn to grow into this state. I mean, it is fantastic, you know, to be the leader, to get everyone to roll the boat to the same direction. It sounds easy, but it's not. It's not easy. Yeah, uh, and I'm sure you are a great leader. Just by the sound of it, I want to work with you. So, <laughs> oh, uh, yes, I'm right. sure you are amazing, very humble. And uh, I know being a working mom sometimes uh, is hard to balance work and life. Uh, what is your definition of work-life balance, if there's one? <laughs> <laughs> hard question, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, uh, actually, I always, uh, when I talk to my husband, he also has a, a quite big regional role and he also used to travel a lot. Uh, we always say that we always have time. Uh, it's really a question of priority. Mm. Uh, for, for important things, we always find time to do, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think between work and life, uh, it never really come to me as a choice to make. Because yes. I really enjoy my work and I also enjoy mm. spending uh, time with family, especially yeah. with two uh, energetic boys that <laughs> you have a lot, a lot to do with them. Uh, and time is short with kids and also uh, parents, right? uh, especially when we have kids, we start to realize that the, the time to spend with really families are, are mm. very short. Yeah. So we don't want to miss their, uh, their uh, childhood for more important professional life. Mm. So the balance, I would say it's quite natural because we really feel the fulfillment that what I, I do, I do a lot. Uh, it gets me uh, really motivated every day. Uh, that when I'm feeling good, I think that I'm passing positive energies to my boys. And when I get organized for my work, I also try to show them the way to organize their life uh, from young age. So I think all these are connected and quite 
common uh, skills that we, we learn from work and to use in real life. And as I mentioned that uh, myself and my husband used to travel a lot. So we really try to organize our work, the business trips with the family trips so that we get chance to discover a lot of different places that we never thought of uh, visiting and also to share how we work and we, we enjoy life at the same time with the mm. kids. Mm. Make me very jealous. Definitely wanting to travel. I mean, especially now we can't travel, but um, it's it's definitely it's a felt like full of adventures. Uh, you created for your two boys, and talk about your two boys. And and then you know the next two question was actually from your elder son. And sorry, was was his name again? Maxens. Maxens. Yeah. And and then so I was very very touched because you know what a project to actually write a a a. a biography of, of uh, his mom. And, and I, I find it's a really, really good question, you know, uh, so what's your most memorable travel experience? And then you got to share with us as well. Well, I can talk day and night on this. <laughs> <laughs> because we, I continued my discussion with my son on, on this topic, uh, even at, uh, just before he, he sleep and you know, he was lying down and we talked two hours on it and wow. he was really excited about the, the ideas mm. and being an entrepreneur like you both. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I always work for big organizations and big companies. I have never had an entrepreneur experience. And uh, what I really would love to do uh, when my son asked me this question on uh, what was my memorable travel, actually, mm. it, it get me to think about what I'm free to do, mm. uh, to choose my career, what I would really like to do. It, it's never too late, right? No, no. Yeah. So yeah. I was uh, I was telling uh, him really uh, the most memorable travel that I had uh, was uh, actually a, a project that we had with my previous company. We visited a, a really a very poor township in uh, South Africa, and as you know, that South Africa has the highest uh, uh, infection rate of HIV. Mm. Uh, so the township that we visited has 40% uh, HIV rate in the population. So the family we visited, uh, they, the men usually leave the village to, to work uh, in, in bigger place. And the women will stay with kids and the elder uh, parents, uh, but half of them are really very sick and impacted by HIV. Uh, so the project that we had with this association actually is really to find a way uh, very less costly than, than what we could uh, imagine uh, to empower them, get some small income to, to get them out of the daily uh, miserable life. They, they really need to feed their kids and very basic living conditions are not met. Yeah. But these women are amazing women and mom. They, they could raise alone more than 10 kids and still taking care of the land and also wow. animals with the, the parents. And they're, they're working day and night and they would never complain. They're just, they themselves are also AHV, uh, HIV uh, patients, mm. but they didn't get, get complained about anything. And they were so eager to learn. So this association uh, was organizing in the community center a small, they call a mini MBA program. So during five days, uh, we'll be teaching them on uh, how to uh, use internet, how to create and use their email, and how to count their family income and expense, make a small accounting book to, to record uh, how to open a bank account so that when mm. they have income, how to make some small savings. So mm. after a one week program, and they're really interested and motivated. We got a lot of questions and the follow-up. So one of the mom uh, has created a small uh, cooking uh, shop in front of her house so that she could get a 20 euro income per month to raise the 10 kids that she has. So it's really inspiring. And when we donate the initial fund of the 20 euro, she even promised to pay us back and she did later on after the following years. Yeah. Wow. Yes, so that was a, a small example, but then we visited a few associations there. They are trying to introduce, uh, introduce a lot of innovative projects mm. like solar panel to allow them to, to cooking. And also there's some telecommunication 
uh, network and uh, and phones. There are also Danone lady. I don't know whether you have heard. So Danone has created a yogurt uh, with enough to, uh, nutrition for the kids to because they, they really don't have access to to yogurt. Uh, mm. And this yogurt doesn't need to be kept in the fridge, so it can wow. be much easier for logistic to reach the remote uh, village. And the distribution, the selling channel actually is are using these moms in the village so that they are, they are uh, organized uh, with the, 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 the network to reach the, the forest the village to benefit those kids, uh, even at a small, uh, small selling price. So all these projects, actually, what they uh, called is under a model uh, called the fortune of bottom of the pyramid. Mm. We met the author of this book, the co-author of this book, who is an American uh, economist. And I'm just, I was so fascinated about this theory. I, mean, I studied economics in university, but I never thought that indeed that this huge market of uh, around 4 billion people suffering in poverty, that most of the private company won't think of uh, serving this market because there's no profit to make. So we're uh, highly depending on uh, organizations, government, and also the, uh, the uh, non-profit uh, associations to, uh, to help them. But actually, it is a huge market. And by empowering people at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, they could auto-finance their, their needs. They found jobs, and then they can have the power to consume uh, and, and to really uh, build up our economic uh, ecosystem there. And there's a lot of innovative way to do that, to, to at the same time allowing company to stay in a profitable way and also to improve their living conditions. So I have shared all this with my 10 years old son. I don't know how much he understood. Well, it's, well, it's definitely, but, I, it's, it's, yeah, it's fascinating. It's, I can see the, you know, it's, it's kind of almost tears coming from your eyes i think it's it just it just made feel you know women are incredibly resilient and a little it's just need a little bit to kind of um education and the knowledge and then can do a lot of things well, thank you very much for sharing that story it was very much inspiring so that you're doing the same same thing right uh, to inspiring and benefiting from the network so if someone in the network has the same idea i would really love to work for a project like this fantastic i think that would, i'll definitely do more research about uh, the bottom of the pyramid so I, in fact it's actually my first time here but uh, um, i'm so glad i did and so definitely we, we will uh, do something. Maybe next time we should inviting you again and then we can do something, especially um, talk about something about, about this BOP uh, project. And so, so but anyway, thank, uh, Xin, thank you very much for sharing your story. And then I know we only got half hour with you, but I can feel you're a very brave, adventurous mom, and and then really trying to give your kids, you know, um, travel around, and and that's something I think every mom would want to do, and then you achieve it. And I'm so thankful today to have you to share your uh, story and also the bottom of the pyramids with our audience. And so, um, so if if you love the story of, of Shin and please like it and then share with your other mom's friends and also follow us on LinkedIn uh, at Chinese Mom in Business Club and for more um, upcoming interviews with more inspiring Chinese mom. And thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank, thank, thank you. you.